welcome to Weather and Ag in Focus. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki, along with meteorologist stud Justin Storm and <laughs> our wonderful and talented Ag Director Bridget Riedel. It's beautiful outside. It's it's white. That's white sand out there. I'm looking for the beach, though. I can't quite see where the beach is at, but I see the white sand. It's, it's all over. It's under underneath the sand. It's underneath the sand. The wave. It's underneath there. The sand. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow what a storm uh still ongoing in terms of the blowing snow we've got uh still some scattered snow showers on radar uh sweeping uh, through the valley and uh, points westward and up into northwest minnesota so y- y- you'll see a few breaks in the clouds maybe a little sunshine then a few snow showers roll through reducing visibility but blowing snow is going to be the big concern as we head into the afternoon there's a core of uh, higher winds out to our west that'll be pushing towards the valley by about three four o'clock so we'll notice those winds increase uh, as we head towards mid and late afternoon so if you think it's okay to go out in city limits it's okay 19th avenue is still closed uh, for anybody uh, inside city limits and then obviously interstate system still closed many many roads are closed and travel not advised uh, throughout much of the eastern half of the state so you just if you don't have to go anywhere, uh, just don't. It's not advised. Uh, again, within city limits, you're okay, but you're going to run into some uh, some drifting in some areas, uh, reduced visibility, slippery spots, and winter weather advisory has been issued for our area, replacing the blizzard warning. But blizzard warning continues out to our west, where the core of the stronger winds are occurring. And go ahead, Bridge. Back to those road conditions, mm-hmm. uh, our friends up in Trail and Still County are suggesting please don't travel because they yeah. are still trying to get people off the roads who mm-hmm. got stuck and snowed in and spent the night in their cars. So okay. could my- you please give some room for the plows to get things cleaned up? Okay, my question to you, Bridget, because if mm-hmm. <laughs> there was plenty of warning with the system. People were told don't, tra- don't travel. Conditions are going to go downhill very quickly. So how do you mm-hmm. get stranded? And I mean, obviously there's, you know, occasional one or so, but obviously, I got it. All right. Please tell me what's the reasoning behind Here's that? The reasoning behind it is the National Weather Service issued that blizzard to start at 7 a.m. And we didn't really see blizzard conditions until 6 p.m. So people probably saw that and they're like, oh, this is the blizzard. I'll be fine. Mm. Then they went out and then it got really, really bad. Okay. It did. And it it got bad fast because, you know, you could see conditions really changed within an hour yesterday where it really did change very quickly. Now, there are indeed some folks that perhaps perhaps you had cattle you had to get to, right? Okay, I I get it. But generally, those are folks that are well prepared. They probably made arrangements. They were even staying with their herds if they didn't live right at, you know, at that same site. Um, I I wasn't in the car. I don't know what everybody was doing. But for the love of all things holy, let's just (laughs) stay off the highways because the guys driving the snow plows right now or the gals, whomever's doing it, I really just need those roads to open so let's stay out of their way right that's my plan exactly Mm -hmm. and even you know even this when the snow does wind down today and and most of the accumulating snow is done still some snow showers on radar uh, hugging the valley right now uh, especially uh, some more moderate ones up towards grand forks hillsborough area lighter uh, stuff from castleton to fargo but uh so mostly most of the measurable snow is done but even after the snow stops i think that's going to give people a false sense at, at least in the city limits that hey It looks okay. Roads are just wet until you get just outside of the city limits. If you can even get there, um, things go down here real quick. So just stay home if you have to. Again, inside city limits, you're pretty, you're pretty much okay. But there's still a lot of slippery roads. Be careful. But uh, uh, it'll get better tomorrow, but not until because those winds are going to continue most of at least for the first half of tonight, producing and it's so the plows can't even get out in the country roads because you, you plow it, it drifts right back shut. So. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's the yeah, I was big just point. Say, I've, I've seen a, so much snow on the roadsides that you can't hardly get, you exactly. can't hardly keep them open. It just it, keeps blowing in. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I was gonna say I saw a few videos of plows going through, and then they they do one side of the road and they come back, and the the side they just done is already starting to fill back in with snow drifting over and just turning to ice with all the, you know, the ro- the roads are warm. And as soon as they start mm-hmm. melting, you get more snow to blow across it. it. It's just blow ice. It just sheets right back over. And yeah. and Justin, Justin and I were talking about this last night, and I brought this up on uh, on air this morning. 
that uh, a lot of people thought, well, you know what? We didn't get as much snow as was forecasted. It was pretty close. I mean, we got anywhere between six and eight inches here in the uh, uh, FM area, even uh, higher amounts in the uh, north side of the city where they had uh, reports of close to 11. So that was pretty close. The heaviest snow fell where we thought it would. Uh, some areas didn't get as much, but uh, I think a lot of people were referring to that the Weather Service had, and this is no knock on the Weather Service, but uh, they had, uh, what was it last night, uh, 13 to 21 13 inches? To 20, to 20, or 13 to 23. Okay, now there's no the way, valley. there's no way we were getting 23 inches, not with this storm system. And so the way the weather service does that they do a 75 percent 25 percent so it's 75 percent on the low end 75 percent chance you're going to get that low end amount and the 25 percent you're going to get the high end amount not many people in the general public know that so um you know i, I don't know if, what they can do to change that but that's it's just such a wide range and people need to kind of know hey it's only 25 percent chance we get that higher end amount shouldn't even be on there <laughs> to begin with Okay, I got a point here, though. Okay. For those of you who I am watching on social media saying, oh, it was so inaccurate, that not, nobody can get forecasting right. This was terrible. We didn't get nearly as much as they said. Hey, you got six inches of snow. Why are you mad that you didn't get 18? <laughs> Calm down. Remember, it's better than expected, and stay off the road. Yeah. I'm just trying to give you some helpful advice yeah. here. That's and, and I even said that, you know, even if we get the low-end amount, don't focus, and Justin said the same thing, don't focus on the amount of snow because when the winds hit, it's not going to matter if it's 6 inches, 10 inches, or 12 inches. The roads are going to be impassable. So that was the whole message to get across. It's not necessarily, you know, exactly how much snow we get. But the amount we get is going to impact travel and make things impassable. So that was the whole, like, just, yes. yeah, it's, uh, that's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the snow map from what's fallen. And what were we saying? We were saying four to eight over in Lakes Country. And for the most part, that's exactly what fell over there. We were going eight to 12 within the valley and heavier amounts upwards of 16 inches from, uh, say, south of Jamestown up towards the Northern Valley. And while within the immediate FM metro, I mean, reports are anywhere from 5 to 11 inches of snow. And keep in mind, some of these uh, reports are coming in from last night. And uh, the higher amounts, about 8.2 and far, uh, two miles south of South Fargo, 11 inches up in North Fargo. But the general gist of it, I think, was about 5 to 8 inches in the FM metro. And then you start zooming out and you take a look and you're anywhere from about 8 to 15 up in Grand Forks, 12 inches over by Jamestown, 12 up by Cooperstown. Uh, heaviest amount I think I saw was about 16 or so. Look at that, 30 well, inches in Hot Springs, South Dakota. Wow. I was just going to say, if you look at that, that legend that you've got, I saw Ashley, North Dakota was listed somewhere around 14 inches. And there's our friend, Dr. Emily Fox with the Ashley Vet Clinic. Uh, I hope she didn't get a lot of calls late last night where she needed to travel, as she's told us about, because that would have been pretty tough for mobility. There's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely would have been. So the, the storm pretty much panned out as, as it was expected to. Slightly lighter amounts, uh, but all in all, you know, the heavier snow fell where we thought it would, and uh, it, we, we wound up with it wasn't quite blizzard conditions. So uh, I've had a lot of people say, does the weather service need to redefine what, uh, you know, what a blizzard actually is before they issue it? And, yeah, there's some things that could have been done differently, and, you know, but hindsight's twenty twenty, and we don't, well, con we don't, we don't the control the warnings that come out. <laughs> Hold on, no, hold not on. one bit. The other. Th Go ahead, Bridget. The weather service. <laughs> the weather service wants our input on whether or not they should change the blizzard warning. The same way that the NFL can't wait to hire you as a referee. I mean, come on. You can armchair it all you want after the fact, but this is not. This isn't up for debate. This is what we live with. We live here. Just understand the rules of the game, and that is: it is cold, it is windy, and you're probably going to sleep in your car if you're out there. See, Bridget. We, we got to put yeah, Bridget to work for Pretty spot on. She understands. She, she, we're gonna, I'm going <laughs> to call the guys and gals down at the uh, NWS and see if they have an opening for Bridget. Fine. But she, then, again, the NFL, let Roger Goodall know I'm wide open for help, <laughs> although I don't actually know most of the rules. That's marginal. Yeah, neither right neither there. do those Nobody refs that uh, have their certificates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Perfect. My. 
Get, you know, no guests Let's today, see. you guys. So it's kind of a free for all mm -hmm. for us to talk about anything we want. What? And this is an opportunity for our listeners to call us on the Red Wing Shoes phone line, 701-293-9000 as well. That's right. If you have any questions on the storm, any questions on uh, uh, anything ag related, but we will have after we come back from our uh, uh, little break here, we're going to uh, be talking about um, carbon tax in Canada, and we've got a video. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people remember Quick Dick McDick when he was on with us. Um, he's a farmer rancher up in uh, is it Sas Saskatchewan, Saskatoon. He's in Sas he's in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. So we will. Uh, he's got a video that we're going to play, and it explains uh, the complexity behind the carbon tax and how they try and spin it to make it sound like this is a, this is not a bad thing. And, you know, could something like this be implemented in the U.S.? So we'll be talking about more about that coming up here right after the break. Hi, this is Kevin Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer's Auction Company. Pfeiffer's upcoming April auctions include 710 acres in Stutzman County near Eldridge, 400 acres in Emmons County near Linton, 160 acres of cropland in Barnes County, 120 acres in Sheridan County near McCluskey, 480 acres in Sioux County, and 320 acres of farmland and pastureland in McLean County near Benedict, North Dakota. And don't forget, farm equipment retirement auctions in New Salem, Edinger, Kender, Steele, and Bowman, North Dakota. View these auctions and many more land and equipment auctions at Pfeiffer's. Did you know that pork is the world's most consumed meat? Pork comprises over one-third of all meat consumed. Pigs were domesticated over 9,000 years ago in 7,000 BC, and there are more than 180 species of pigs. Why pork? Well, it's not just because everybody loves bacon. Historically speaking, pork is a very easy meat to preserve via smoking, curing, or salting. Not only could it keep well before refrigeration, but it also tastes great under various preservation tactics and adaptable to a variety of flavors, spices, and dishes across differing cultures and regions. There are twice as many pigs as there are people in Denmark. Did you also know that China is the world's lead pork producer? In 2020, they produced an impressive 41.13 million metric tons of the meat, which equates to almost 91 billion pounds. So the next time you dive into that plate of bacon, know that pork is the world's most consumed meat. These farm facts brought to you by the American Ag Network. Oh, can you imagine a stress-free Sunday with family, friends, fun, and food? You can have it when you make Barron's your new Sunday brunch headquarters. Experience a brunch like nowhere else. Your kids will love the customizable waffle bar, fresh scrambled eggs, thick-cut bacon, and much more. Plus, while Mama sips on a mimosa, you can wear out the kids in the arcade at Kingpins. For a stress-free Sunday, mention My Brunch Headquarters and receive 20% off Brunch at Barron's. Make your Sunday stress-free, filled with great food, no cleanup, and most importantly, where family, friends, fun, and food come together for Brunch at Barron's. Go to brunchatbarrons.com. Again, brunch at B-A-R-O-N-S dot com. And don't forget to mention My Brunch Headquarters for 20% off. And experience your stress-free Sunday at brunchatbarrons.com. Brunch at Barrons, located inside Kingpins off I-29 and 52nd Avenue South in Fargo. What do eyewear and weather have in common? Join us for the Aspire Optical Eye on the Sky weekly weather forecast to find out. Each Tuesday morning, Dean Wysocki, Justin Storm, and myself, Ashley Freeborn, owner of Aspire Optical, will bring you the seven-day forecast. You never know where we'll be or how it will be presented, but we promise to bring you the most accurate forecast this side of the Red River. And learn how you can save big on eyewear from Aspire Optical. Watch the Aspire Optical Eye on the Sky weekly weather forecast on our Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter pages. Trust us, this is weather and eyewear like you've never seen. Join us on Tuesday at 10.06 a.m. when we bring you the Luther Family Ford Nonprofit of the Week on the Coffee Club. This is one of the most special things we do to honor and showcase our local nonprofits because they are the lifeblood of keeping our communities safe, fed, housed, educated, and more. Join us at 10.06 a.m. every Tuesday when we bring you another Luther Family Ford Nonprofit of the Week on WDAY's The Coffee Club. Quality Meats and Seafood in West Fargo is looking for material handlers and production associates. Applicants will be staging orders and loading trucks for daily delivery routes. This is a full-time position Monday to Friday with weekends and holidays off. Pay depends on experience. Quality Meats is an employee-owned company with profit sharing, great benefits including Blue Cross Blue Shield, Health Vision and Dental, 401k with company match and more. If all this wasn't good enough, you'll get discounted pricing on meat and seafood too. Ready to go? Apply in person at Quality Meats and Seafood in West Fargo. And 
welcome back to Weather and Ag and Focus. I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, this afternoon on this, uh, well, <laughs> snowy, blowy, cloudy, whatever else. What are their other, let's see. Well, anything else I can't use. We'll get banned by the balmy. FCC. Balmy. Yeah, it's balmy. All right. Still a few scattered snow showers on radar uh, from Grand Forks to uh, just east of Hillsboro. And again, some of those approaching the FM area. So still uh, a lot of wind out there still. So uh, travel not advised. A lot of blowing and drifting to the snow through about midnight tonight before winds start to calm down. So, guys, I was uh, checking uh, Quick Dick McDick. He was one of, our, uh, one of our guests here a while back. And he had a video on about carbon tax. Now, I know we've talked about the carbon tax a bit, uh, Bridget, and what I want to do is uh, we'll play his uh, YouTube video on this, on this, uh, the, how they're implementing a carbon tax up in Canada. And uh, I want everybody, I, I learned a lot from this and just how absurd, I mean, how absolutely absurd this is. And uh, we'll field questions after the video. Go, guys, go ahead and roll that uh, YouTube video, please. Quick take break, Dick coming to you from Saskatchewan here today. And on this segment of Thoughts from the Barn, we're talking about the Canadian federal carbon tax. So right now in Canada, this guy and this guy have set a price on pollution at this much per ton. That means that anytime you drive one of these, these, or these, you have to pay a carbon tax on the fuel that you burn while driving. Whenever you turn anything on that requires this, you pay a carbon tax on it. But whenever you use things like this to have a hot shower or this to heat your house so you can survive in our cold climate, you pay a carbon tax on it. And then, just when you feel like you couldn't be taxed anymore, this guy and this guy charge you this on top of the carbon tax. That's right, you pay a sales tax on top of the carbon tax. It's a tax on a tax. And just when you think it couldn't get any worse, this guy and this guy are going to increase the carbon tax on April 1st by this much per ton, making it this much per ton. Is it convenient that they do this every April Fool's Day? It's like they're laughing at us. Then on top of this for the carbon taxes here, they want to add this, which is a whole new set of regulations that's going to make using this, this, and this more expensive. Now there's a whole bunch of people kind out there that say, hey, quick tick, you get one of these to offset the carbon tax that you pay. You get more back than you put into it. But even this guy says that this year, houses alone across the prairie will experience a net loss with the rebate factored in of this much. And in 2030, we'll experience a loss with the rebate factored in up to this much when their carbon tax hits this much. Now, the problem with all these numbers that people keep throwing around and what the price of the carbon tax actually does, is nobody takes into consideration how it affects the price of this. Now, from an ag perspective, we've always had to pay a carbon tax on stuff like this and this that we use to heat our shops, barns, and of course, to dry grain with and even on the electricity we use to run these things to keep these little guys warm. Do you believe this? <laughs> so everybody's all happy that Bill C-234 passed the House of Commons and is headed to the Senate now, and hopefully we'll get approved and get royal assent. You know what Bill C-234 is, right? That's what exempts on-farm natural gas and propane use from the carbon tax. But don't forget that this lady right here, our federal ag minister, voted against it passing. Just remember that Bill C-234 isn't enough. Now, I say it's not enough because whenever we've got to hire these, these, or these to deliver to or take from the farm, they charge us a carbon tax because they're subject to a carbon tax on their fuel. Now, remember, we need this to grow food in Canada, but any company that manufactures that in Canada gets charged this on the manufacturing process of that, and this gets passed on to us. And wherever we go to buy equipment that's made here in Canada that we use to farm, like these, this, these, this, or these. Any of the manufacturers in Canada that make these are charged a carbon tax on the manufacturing processes that they use to make these things, and then that cost gets passed down to us at the end of the line that are the purchasers of it. So we're still punished by the carbon tax in farming. But you as a consumer are unknowingly punished by the carbon tax as well, because whether you buy this, this, or require these, you have to pay for that business to have a building out of which they operate, or if they need to keep any of the products that you buy from them in a temperature controlled environment, they pay a carbon tax on the energy they use to do so and then have to pass that cost on to you. And to get said products to any of these places in a country that's this size, you need to use these, these, and these. And they run on fossil fuels on which they pay a carbon tax, which they are going to pass the cost along to you. 
But by the end of 2023, $8 billion will have been collected from small business in Canada from the carbon tax, and only $35 million will be returned back through programs to said businesses. Do you know who gets to pay for the difference of that? You and me as customers. But nobody talks about this when we factor in the little quote saying you get back more than you put in. <laughs> So we're punished unmercifully as Canadians for driving, heating our homes, and eating, all while being responsible for this much of global greenhouse gas emissions on a faulty national inventory report. Then we're told to, oh, hey, blue ball. Then we're told to switch over to unreliable energy sources like these or these, whose components are mostly controlled by these guys, who are also responsible for this much of global greenhouse gas emissions. And not only that, but they're busy with their fingers in our elections here in Canada. Meanwhile, this guy tells us that we need to do more, who is absolutely 100% addicted to traveling on one of these, which emits this much CO2 per hour and takes a vacation to this place at the cost of this much to taxpayers and is this year going to give himself a raise of this much money. This guy takes 277 climate change people kind to this country on a plane to the tune of this many dollars for a UN conference on climate change and stays at a resort that has one of the worst environmental ratings in the area to the tune of $1,200. Boy, oh boy. Uh, so, for, yeah, if you're listening, uh, we'll kind of break that down for you. So we're going to direct you to our, uh, to our uh, social media channel to watch this because it, it, to me, when I watch this, I was just, I was alarmed because, okay, this is being done in Canada. And Bridget, you said they're trying to implement this in Europe. What? are the chances that, I mean, this can get implemented here in the U.S.? Well, they're already okay, almost break doing down that of, right now. There's a lot of push for those types of things, absolutely. And, and let's go through the numbers that were blanked out in QDM's video. So he mentioned that as far as Canada is concerned, they only contribute 1.6% of all total greenhouse gases across the world. 1.6%, okay, so that's nothing. 1.6, that's Ugh. nothing. He, he mentioned that with your vehicles, that they are being charged $50 per ton as a carbon tax for vehicle fuel, $50 per ton for electricity. Now, their leaders like Trudeau, et cetera, want them to also pay a sales tax on top of what they are being charged for their carbon tax. So it's a double taxation on those items. April 1, so just past April 1st now, there was an increase of $15 per ton on that carbon tax. So your $50 on your vehicles and your electricity just went to 65. This does not in any way, shape or form take into the account of what this is gonna do for food. Reason being that carbon tax is gonna be on your semis or any transportation and shipping costs. Fertilizer that's purchased in order to raise your crop. Most of the fertilizer market, especially for Canada, is controlled by Russia, who by the way, emits 30% of global greenhouse gas. So they're the bigger problem. Canada's being taxed for it. You also get that carbon tax when you buy farm equipment, grain bins, any of those types of things. When he mentioned the dollar amount that's being taxed on small businesses, which includes farms, it was $8 billion. The return on the rebates equated to 35 million. So that was 8 billion Jeez. to 35 million being returned with consumers paying the difference. Once again, on your fuel, your electricity, but most importantly, your food, which Canada does raise a fair amount of food with only 1.6% of greenhouse gas emissions. And, and if this passed, if something similar to this passed here in the U.S., can you imagine the spike in food prices? Because the price has to be passed down. I mean, you know they're not going to. It, so, it know, does. It's it's. It, there's got to be a point where we as a as as a country just put our. I mean it's all it comes down to elections. But you have got to put your foot down somewhere that, you know, that it's too much overreach and it's just it's not right. And I, I don't know what the. So is it a control thing? It's just it's just it's ridiculous. Well, there's a whole lot of theories out there. But if you look at what's been happening in Europe, look at the pushback in the Netherlands and Belgium where farmers are being told that they have to farm less, that there will be cuts in their supplies, et cetera, in order to eliminate some of the farms. I mean, the Netherlands wants to take out a third of active, farm, uh, active farms right now. There is pushback in France because certain chemistries like neonicotinoids can no longer be used 
in their sugar beet production, which will essentially eliminate their manufacturing of their own sugar in that particular country, right? Let's switch it over here to the U.S. Has that happened yet? The rumors have been floating around. If you look at what's been going on with banking industries, we are hearing from global banks that as a farm, your environmental steward or your environmental social governance score, your ESG score may be taken into account as to whether or not you're approved for farm loans. Yet as of just this morning, Steve Hallstrom, who is our general manager CEO, he mentioned that he is seeing reports from JP Morgan and Chase Bank that they are saying, you know what, we've got to fix the economy and stop worrying so much about climate change. It's costing us a fortune. We're going to see people going broke if we're not careful, just like happened in Sri Lanka. We're also seeing it in Paraguay, et cetera. So this is a lot to digest. I realize that folks are going to need to do their homework on here, and we want you to. We don't want you to just take our word for it. Think all these things through. Dean just mentioned the farm bill. We are actively working on a farm bill that needs to go in place by the uh, end of the third quarter this year. If you have concerns, now is your time to pick up the phone and talk with your legislators, your commodity groups like your corn growers, your soybean growers, et cetera, because these are the places to get your voice heard. We don't want to let that pa mm -hmm. opportunity pass you by. So there was my whole dissertation. I apologize for taking all your time. <laughs> well, I'm giving Where's you a work? standing applause on that. That was beautiful. <laughs> now, I, I'm just waiting for the PowerPoint to come up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's just my handwritten notes. So. Oh, man. Uh, but okay. I mean, that, that well, could, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head that, uh, you know, we've got to worry about fixing the economy before, I mean, the, you know, especially when it comes down to, one point was it 1.8 1. 1. 1.6 percent of greenhouse gases are yes. produced that is so and and you're going to drive <laughs> from 1.6 percent you know the, and and believe me farmers ranchers are doing everything they can as as, as you know bridget to, you know to be yep. uh, good stewards and and make you know and not leave a big carbon footprint but when the government steps in and, and tries to overreach and not only is that good, it's it's not going to help the economy. It's not going to help food prices. It's going it, to, like you said, somebody's going broke. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's well, and and just remember, here in the United States, we currently have the cheapest, safest, and most abundant food supply of any country in the world. Prior to the pandemic, we were only spending ten percent of every dollar on food. Unlike European nations that were already pushing sixty percent, and you get to Asian nations like China. Where, excuse me, Japan, Japan was paying 85 to 90 percent of their dollar just on food costs. So think that through. You don't like your food costs now. This can change what's going on for you. We, just a heads up. Yeah. And, 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 the far, and you said that is in the farm bill or it is not, Bridget? Uh, there, I, Something there are similar. a lot of conservation. Yeah, there's a lot of conservation practices in the farm bill as far as the carbon tax. I'm going to need to go look more deeply. I am not aware of a carbon tax proposal in this farm bill. Okay. But remember, we have to redo a farm bill every X amount of years. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to chime in on this, give us your thoughts on what you think about all this. Feel free to do so. Call us on the Red Wings studio line, 701-293-9000. Again, that phone number, 701-293-9000. Can reach us via email, weather or ag at flag family. We'll come back to this conversation, touch on a few more ag topics as well when we come back. They'll have you laughing right along with them. They're Bonnie and Friends. Real masquerade party? I think I would do it. I would too. <laughs> Who would you go as? I don't know. Because you got to really do I it up on I can't carry it. that off. I'd have like a mask that you hold in your hand with oh, sparkles great. on it and like a little foo-foo with feathers coming out no, of my head. No. I wouldn't look like anybody. Somebody uh, out there could dress you to the nines in a costume and nobody would know until I you open your mouth. Of course, they'd know it was you. <laughs> you know. That's true. Bonnie and Friends. Catch them weekday mornings beginning at 5. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. At four in the morning, my phone rang. They said, I regret to inform you that your husband was wounded in action. Victor sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. I was doing school full time, and I was also then caring for Victor. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. I just didn't want to forget that I also had goals and that I also had a life. What I did is I challenged Victor to meet me halfway. 
there are almost six million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. We have our own journey, and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey and better care for your loved one and yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Nancy Kelly Realty is here for you. We would love to show you around. Looking for the simplicity of country living? Then welcome home to Colfax Meadows in Colfax, North Dakota. An easy 25-minute drive from Fargo or Wapiton. We have half and one-acre lots starting at 22.5 with a two-year tax exemption on new homes and low, low specials. Build your dream home, raise a family, or retire in the country. Colfax Meadows has a place for you. Find us at nancykellyrealty.com. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. Of course I use Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to clean tough messes off my stovetop and bathtub. But then I discovered I can also use it to easily clean my patio furniture and even my shoes. I'm hooked. And when wipes won't cut it, I use Magic Eraser Sheets. They're thin and flexible erasers, perfect for everyday messes, like gunk on my counters and sinks. They really are magical. The reviews are in. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and Sheets make cleaning look easy. A good work partner knows what you need before you need it. That's how it feels when you work with CentOS. Your dedicated CentOS service reps get to know your business and have the industry knowledge that can help you prepare for what's ahead. They'll deliver your team's workwear freshly laundered. Make sure your first aid and safety supplies, mats, mops, and towels are stocked when you need them. And your fire extinguishers are inspected and in working order. Visit CentOS.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. Whether you own a local business or a global one, you're always looking for ways to position your operation to create opportunities and move on them faster. With Bank of America, you get access to experts, award-winning insights, and business solutions so powerful, you'll make every move matter, locally and globally. Visit bankofamerica.com slash banking for business to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Copyright 2023, Bank of America, N.A. Welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. Thanks for rejoining us, 138 on this afternoon. Before we went to break there, we were talking about a video that QDM have just posted. Uh, he's from Saskatchewan on the carbon taxes up there on Canada and how it's affecting its people, its food supply. And if something like that could be implemented here in the United States, and well, there's always the possibility, but we want to hear your thoughts on it. If you have any uh, comments, if you want to join in our conversation, give us a phone call on the Red Wing Shoes studio line, 701-293-9000 or you can reach us via email weather or ag at flagfamily.com yeah. and we did get one emailer who can who sent in and he's basically saying with uh the last two years of biden just wait to see what happens he's got the biggest push for environmental change that we've ever heard of he's got us by the short hairs and he mentioned that d and you and me need to start talking about true weather temperature and climate change exactly and uh you know there it's you know in in there, there's going to be a point, you know, taxation without representation. I'm, are, 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 are we taught this in school anymore about, you know, the Boston Tea Party? And, you know, if you don't fix history, you're, you're, you're going to repeat it. And it, it, it just looks like we're going down that road again. There's going to be a point where, where, where people are, uh, they're, they're tired of this. And uh, I, I can't believe, can, I mean, Canadians, I know, are laid back. But uh, there's got to be a point where you've just had enough and, I guess the only way is to fix things is to, is to you know quit voting these people in that that are implementing these these crazy tactics. You know, is there climate change? Yeah, there is. I mean, there there's no way denying it. But here's the big but that it, all this climate push, this push for um, all solar and and all electric and you know like like QDM said, that's fine and dandy, but. Where are you getting? This is all runoff fossil fuels, and then uh, you're going to have to dig for all the cobalt. And it's just do some research behind this before you hop on. You know, eventually, I'm sure we'll get there, but you can't push it so quickly. You can't push the issue that quick. Okay, 
That's huge. It's it's these uh, abrupt changes that are going to be painful and hard for a lot of a lot of situations. So that's probably the biggest contributing factor to people's uh, fear of what's going on. Right. We I can understand wanting to make some changes. Sure. And I get that. But some of the big picture things, for instance, WOTUS, Waters of the U.S., that has been called out by many senators and legislators as nothing more than an environmental land grab. And so mm -hmm. that is currently being pushed back in states. There's been um, 34 states using North Dakota as the district court are filing to uh, against what Biden, the Biden administration is currently wanting to use for a definition of waters of the U.S. because it would take over so much land area that uh, previously wasn't governed under the Clean Water Act and the waters of the U.S. So that's a whole huge discussion in itself, getting to those topics. But understand that, once again, this is the point where we have to vote. We have to make our voices heard. Every time I talk to a farmer group, and I did it just on Monday earlier this week, we have to take our time to reply back to when EPA has open comment periods. We have to do the same thing with our legislators because otherwise no one's listening to what's practical. And that was at the very end of QDM's video message. If you go back and listen to the whole thing, he said, no one's asking what's the practicality of implementing these items. That's the biggest hang up, right? It sounds like a good idea on paper, but mm -hmm. does it actually work? Not necessarily. And especially, you know, when we're only responsible or, you know, the ag community is only responsible for 1.6% of all greenhouse gases, and you're going to tax this to the point where uh, food prices go through the roof and um, that's going to put a, a bigger strain on, on the economy and, and people's budgets all for 1.6%. That's nuts. I mean, the, to me, that's just, that's, that's not using common sense. That's power grab. And okay, Justin, well, Mm -hmm. You get are you voice is always yelling. Who who said that? I am not insane. Stop it. Stop talking to Here's you. My Do you have your tinfoil hat? I'm bothering you, man. You need it's, one it's somewhere. A foil hat? Yeah, a foil hat. All right. <laughs> Here's my two cents. Hit me with it. Here's my two cents. And if you have your comments, give us a call 701-293-9000. COVID was the start to see how much control the government could have on us. Now, let's push this carbon tax. Let's see if we can control them even more. It's just, that's, I don't know, maybe I'm way off base, but uh, it's, it's way too much of a power grab, way too much control, and uh, it's, 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 it's not going to work. It's people are eventually going to stand up. You would hope people are eventually going to stand up, and they're just going to be sick of it, sick of, you know, the power grab. And that's just my two cents. There's my tinfoil so hat. <laughs> I, I can go to one of our ag headlines that actually is something that maybe could actually be useful out of all of this. How's that sound? Let's do that. Okay. So when it comes to, and we're going to go right back to Canada because this is actually taking place in Quebec. When you see these big data centers that have all of this hardware and equipment computerized, that's generating so much heat. Often that heat is just vented out into the atmosphere. There's actually a company in uh, in Quebec that they're planning on building a greenhouse next door to one of these data centers and using the heat to funnel into the greenhouse to grow fruits yeah. and tomatoes. They're expecting somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,800 tons of small fruit and 80,000 tons of tomatoes. Wow. That's a lot of ketchup, kids. But <laughs> that's actually a good idea. I, I could see taking that heat from those data centers or if you've seen some of these Bitcoin mining operations they generate a ridiculous amount of heat and that some of it's um, sometimes they have to be water cooled. So now you could take the water that's used in the cooling system, use that mm -hmm. to water what's going on in the greenhouse. So that's actually not a bad idea. That's that great. ingenuity. Not completely crazy. Yeah. No, that's a great yeah. idea. That one I can live with. That's a great idea. So, so are all so these like, uh, computer tech places that end up doing this going to get involved in agriculture and start paying that tax as well? Wouldn't that be interesting to see if, right. yeah, do they have to get that carbon tax on all of their power that they use? Hmm, let's wait and see. That'd be interesting to watch. Interesting. Absolutely. And, and Bridget, you have some weather trivia today as well. You're gonna, are you going to try and stump the, stump the chumps? Well, who <laughs> wants to raise their hand as the chump today? Okay, so <laughs> we've been talking about Saskatchewan. And so April 6th, 1981. 
let's go back in time. Wind gusts in Ooh. southern Saskatchewan reached how many miles per hour that closed down schools, knocked down power lines, and blew topsoil right off the ground? What Anybody month? Anybody want to guess that number? What month was it? This was April 6th, April 6th, 1981. Justin wasn't even around, so... I know it's just yeah, you and that's Adrian. not fair. That's not fair to Justin. Uh, I'm going to say I know. Would you Google it? No. <laughs> I'm going to say 120 miles an hour. Ooh, I'm going to go 97. Justin, what do you got? 97. Believe it or not, this this actually seems low considering what's been happening as of late. 67 miles oh, an hour. It? So in kilometers, Dean, you were closer. That's 108 kilometers. Well, that's well, it was a sketch one. That's why that was in kilometers. Hey. Yeah, I, yeah, I was I was already oh, translated. Using, you, 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 I, I was you, already you translated to metrics real quick. Exactly. Yeah. So the hundred twenty. <laughs> yeah. I, I see. Like, yeah, yeah. like a big brain action. <laughs> well, and since we are dealing with a little snow and ice, here's one last one for you. April 9th to the thirteenth in nineteen ninety one, an ice jam was three miles long in Maine. On what river? It broke up and it released a thirty foot wall of ice that crushed cars, houses, and bridges. What river Man, that was that on? Sight. What's what's really? the first? This was in Maine. In, in Maine. What's the uh, what's the first letter? I think I have it, but what's the first letter? Well, it's a saint. Oh. Saint Saint. Something. I'm gonna go Saint Maine in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. How is it? <laughs> saint John's River. Saint, saint John's. John's. This river. was April. 1991, an ice jam was three miles long. Wow. That's a lot of ice. I mean, I got a lot of snow out here, but that's a whole lot of ice there, boys. That's a rapid warm-up after a sure very is. cold winter. That that will happen. Yeah. Oof. Well, wow. they sometimes get similar when... things to that happening on uh, Superior and Mille Lacs over in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. like some of the other big, large lakes, you get the ice that starts breaking apart or sometimes it's not even breaking apart but there's some open water and the wind is so vigorous that it chops up enough water and it just snaps those sheets of ice and you get wind for a prolonged period of time pushing in one direction and all of that ice gets pushed on shore and it ends up taking down houses at times that are too close yeah. to the water line mm -hmm. I, I saw it happen just a few years ago there was a handful of houses on gull lake in Niswa, Minnesota, mm -hmm. East Gull Lake, Minnesota, that were threatened and hit with all that ice. And then again, the year, the same year and the year before on Mille Lacs, that took out a few houses. I adore when I get weather trivia that you guys get to muddle on just a little bit. That that takes you right over the edge. We're, so, we're going to have to do some I'll ag. Help. We're going to have to do some ag, dig up some ag trivia for tomorrow. See if we can stump stump Bridget. Yes. <laughs> stump this chump. That'd stump be fabulous. This chump. Okay, so. <laughs> But while you're thinking about that, what you're going to quiz me on, we're going to go to the American Egg Network and catch up with all of our market updates. Be right back. It's Jane Ronnie from the Coffee Club, and we are taking the show on the road. We're going to Sweet Shots Thursday, where it's the master headquarters for the tournament. Sponsored by Michelob Ultra, the show will be live until 11 a.m., and then Sweet Shots opens for all the live coverage of the Masters, including Masters food. Enjoy specialty foods they have at the Masters, like the famous pimento and cheese sandwiches. That's Sweet Shots in Fargo, brought to you by Michelob Ultra, Thursday, April 6th. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so stressed. Our business is growing. We've got people all over now. Uma. What is that? Meditation? I'm recommending the Uma cloud phone system with auto attendant and more than 50 features. Uma? Yep. Switching to Uma is a cinch. Just $24.95 per month per user, plus taxes and fees. Uma. Now you're feeling it. Find Small Business Calm at Uma.com slash radio. That's O-O-M-A dot com slash radio. As a roofer, I'm always on the go. So I need to be able to get things done from anywhere. That's why I partner with Beacon. With the new Beacon Pro Plus app, I've got the brands I depend on, like GAF, right at my fingertips. It's like having my Beacon rep in my pocket 24-7. I rely on Beacon because I never stop building, and neither do they. Now through June, purchase through Beacon Pro Plus and earn up to $1,500. Beacon, always building. A veteran's hope. Where are you hiding? I search for you in the seconds, the minutes of each and every day. Hear me as I call out to you. Welcome me home. Alone we stood, 
Divided we fell, no longer. Now we choose to make the connection. Our new mission lies within. Visit maketheconnection.net to learn more. Mixed action in the grain markets on Wednesday. This is the American Ag Network. of Jesse Allen with this market update. We're talking now with Arlen Suderman of Stone X. Arlen, we watched this grain trade. We started risk off again this morning, but quarter beans have recovered back near unchanged. I'm wondering your thoughts. Seems like a bit of easing of tensions here across the grain and oil seeds. I have to consider this a, a win today, despite everything swirling around the market. Yeah, I would definitely agree. We're seeing a little bit more pressure, double digit at times uh, in the wheat market as uh, more rains have popped up in the plains for the uh, week two forecast. A lot of forecasters are skeptical whether that's going to happen, but nonetheless, in an environment where you're facing headwinds, it certainly doesn't help you go against those headwinds. But overall, we started seeing headwinds across the, the commodity sector as well as the equities this morning when the ADP private sector jobs report came out for the month of March showing that 145,000 private sector jobs were created during the month. That was way below what the trade was anticipating at 200,000 and gives some idea that we may see um, a jobs report from the government on Friday showing fewer jobs created than anticipated. And what that means is going along with yesterday's JOLTS job openings report, we may be starting to see the economy slow down. And that means recession and less demand for commodities. Uh, but the corn and soybean market has been pretty resilient today. And I think that speaks well for the fundamentals underneath those markets. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going higher or, or where we're going to go from here. But the fact that they're handling these headwinds fairly well right now, I do think speaks well for the resiliency of this market to this point as we kind of watch and see how the planting season unfolds in the weeks ahead here in the United States. That's Arlen Suderman of Stone X on the American Ag Network. We're in Ag and Focus, thanks for rejoining us. 153 this afternoon before we went to break. Uh, Bridget was uh, giving me and Dean a little bit of trivia, and over our break, we pulled up a little bit of trivia for <laughs> Bridget, so we'll see if she can get any of these back. So, Bridget, I got two for you. Do you want crop for 500 or do you want <laughs> livestock for 500 I'd like you to Venmo the V the 500 and then ask me livestock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dating back to 3,600 B.C. in Persia. That's the one I was going to use. <laughs> Water-filled bladder mattresses were made from an off-discarded organ of a particular domesticated animal. What was the animal? Pig stomachs. Pig stomachs. It was a goat. Mm. Oh, uh. so close. <laughs> That's true, because back Dean, then you... goats would have been more domesticated. Got it. Mm -hmm. Dean, do you got do you got another one? You want me to throw her a crop for five hundred? Uh, go ahead and throw her a crop for five hundred. All right, biotech scientists. That's the same one I was going to use. <laughs> Planck Institute <laughs> have experimented with using what simulated cereal alkaloid as a defensive substance against herb or herbivorous insects, man. English is hard. This Herbaceous substance insects? is often associated with human usage in various forms. What is it? Okay, it's hold on. First of all, I'm still waiting for, for my 500 bucks. And this oh, is coming it, right. from Yeah, so it's not coming from a herbaceous or it's coming from a herbaceous plant, but it's still used to fight off insects. What? Does that make sense? Cereal alkaloid as a defensive substance against insects. Um, so there's some allopathic responses and, and, in some and weeds. The hint is this substance is often associated with human usage in various forms. So is it like a sap? Does that make sense? Mm. Uh, plant? It, it is something <laughs> from a plant that's used. It's a chemical okay, from so a plant. Okay, so I'm going to say it's... Yeah, uh, we're taking it from milkweed and we're using it to make uh, some sort of um, allergy 
medic medication. It How's is that? nicotine. <laughs> nicotine from tobacco has been experimented to use to fight off insects. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, okay, you just... It's like one too many cigarettes for a for a um, <laughs> aphid, maybe. Is that what we're doing with them? I, <laughs> I think they get a little nicotine sickness, and they just kind of get the spins and pass out. <laughs> Man, imagine if you took them to an ACD concert. That kind of contact high would be tremendous for an insect. Wow. Right. That's like that mosquito trap using tequila, where you fill a bottle cap up with tequila and. Uh, <laughs> And you have a pile Wait, of salt. That... The mosquito lands. It thinks that the salt is sugar. It goes to eat some. It trips over its stick looking for water. <laughs> hits its head. Ends up dying. Okay. You realize that's not a trap for a mosquito, but that works on you. Yeah. Right? Uh, just in a bigger <laughs> version. A very tequila. big bottle cap. <laughs> and a large log. Carefully, <laughs> carefully step over this log. <laughs> oh, that's 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 not actually how the worm got in the bottle of tequila. You know that, right? <laughs> oh, I I think that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> nice effort. Let's recap the weather real okay. quick, guys. Uh, we have increasing winds across the FM area right now. There's a line of snow showers uh, from a. About Crookston south, uh, just to about Twin Valley on the east side of the river right now. Uh, they already passed through Grand Forks. Some of those moderate snow showers. Behind that, the winds are really increasing. And uh, our latest short-term models has winds increasing between about 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock up to about 40 to 45 miles an hour. That's going to produce more blowing and drifting of the snow. So conditions, even though the snow falling snow is pretty much done, uh, just looking out the windows here at the studio, we can uh, already see the winds starting to pick up. So uh, that blowing and drifting snow is going to keep those those roads closed in many areas. 19th Avenue is closed in town in uh, in the Fargo area. Uh, other than that, most of the roads in town are open, but you go just outside of city limits and roads are closed and travel is not advised. So please uh, take this seriously. The winds are going to increase. Things are not going to get better this afternoon. They're going to go downhill. Uh, it won't be until after midnight that the uh, winds let up enough to where this will give the, our plow crews a chance to play a little catch up on especially the country roads. Uh, roads in town are okay in most areas, but uh, again, you go right outside of city limits and, uh, and it gets real bad real quick. So just uh, give the plow crews a chance. Just stay home if you, you know, don't go outside of the city limits. Uh, it really couldn't if you wanted. Most roads are closed. So, uh, but conditions will improve a little bit after midnight. And tomorrow promises to be a much more tolerable day with temperatures approaching the freezing mark. And then we'll start to melt this white sand away, if you will, as we head into the weekend with temperatures approaching the low 40s. That's awesome. Uh, and then we might even squeeze a 50 in next week. Temperature's very, very nice next week uh, for the most part, but we'll be keeping a close eye. Again, our LRC calendar has another major storm possible around mid-month. So that would be about, what, a week after Easter or so. So right around mid-month time frame, we could be dealing with another major system entering the northern and central plains. Let's hope that either A stays south or B gives us rain, but... I wouldn't lay any money on either of those right now, so we'll be keeping a close eye on that. But let's just be happy we're warming up for Easter weekend and even into next week with temperatures. We'll melt away a lot of this snow uh, by the end of next week, so that's the good news there. And we Better all news, people are, people are hearing our forecast all over the place, right, Justin Storm? That's right. I had an email from earlier from a gentleman named Graham. Had our uh, was picking up the WDAY signal four thousand four hundred miles away in Finland. Not the app, but the actual the actual signal. Mm -hmm. The actual yeah. radio signal he picked up, which is pretty oh. cool. We'll touch on that a little bit more tomorrow. We're out of time. Until then, everyone have a great afternoon. Jay Thomas show is coming up next. Nine seventy 